Samad Unplugged Festival. I'm glad to have Cody Chestnut here. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, how are you? I'm, pr I'm doing pretty well. What about you? What about your time here so far? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Beautiful people and amazing scenery. Yeah, it's my first time here, so I'm, I'm really overwhelmed. I wish I had more time. But did you have some time to walk around a little? Uh, I did, but I had to rest because I had a long flight from the States. I flew into uh, Roma, and then from Rome to here. It was a long drive, so I needed a lot of rest. And then I heard you had a very um, special um, meeting today because the show is a little different compared to your normal ones. Sure, yes. Um, this is a more stripped-down acoustic uh, approach, and I'm playing with a cellist for the first time, Izzy Dunn. She, she's an artist in her own right, but, and she arranged the strings for my last album, and I, I invited her to be a part of this, this experiment. I think that's typical for the festival, that a lot of things are different mm. to normal shows. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there is um, a big uh, thing going on up on 3,000 uh, meters, mm. which is uh, Ronnie Scott's all-star jazz band. Oh, wow. Are you familiar with this band? I'm not familiar, no. They're so from... Happening 3, feet, that's 3,000 feet up, more? Yep. Wow. What's yeah. Um, I think it is tomorrow or the oh, day tomorrow. after, and yeah, and then they come down also to jam, maybe wow. if you stay long enough with you. <laughs> uh, it depends on what I think. My flight is very early tomorrow, but um, we changed that, right? I, I would love to, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to go back to Italy. Yeah, but I was thinking when I heard about the jazz th thing. How much are you into jazz? I love jazz. I'm not an uh, I'm not a jazz aficionado, but I really I, I appreciate the art form, mm -hmm. and it has influenced my writing. Um, my first experience uh, with jazz uh, was with the album Miles Davis Kind of Blue mm -hmm. and then I went from that to Sketches of, Sketches of Spain and then to Charles Mingus uh, and uh, who else did I buy that year? Uh, Coltrane. But I don't know a lot but I do appreciate it though. You still live in Atlanta, is that right? No, I live in the capital city uh, of Florida, uh, Tallahassee. But I'm, I'm from Atlanta but I live in, in Tallahassee, Florida. Well, I have never been to Tallahassee, but I imagine it's pretty warm there. It can be. We're, we're close to Georgia, uh -huh. and we get a lot of the, the it's, it's northern Florida, so we get more winter. It's, it's colder. It's not, like, it's not like Miami. You know, people think it's, it's warm like Miami all the time, but we get the seasons. It gets pretty cold up in like maybe the low teens, you know, yeah. But I think it's very different to here, right, if you compare these two places? Uh, yes, we don't have as, as nearly as, as many mountains. Uh, I'm not, I haven't been here when it, when it was really cold, so I can't make the comparison, but um, we don't have the mountains you guys have. But it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful uh, state. If we'd spend a day with you, what would we do starting from, let's say, breakfast till nightlife? Um, it's not much nightlife these days. You know, I'm a, I'm a father of two children. I'm a family man, so I don't kind of hang out in the nightlife. But um, uh, a day would start out, I would... Um, you know, I read a little and meditate in the morning. Um, I live in the country, in the rural areas. So I spend a lot of time just listening and, and really being quiet. I like waking up in a very peaceful, you know, peace, having a peaceful uh, awakening. And um, I'll play some music, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, with your children? My children or myself? Yes, it depends. If my children go to school, so um, they may be gone. But uh, I may get get off into to some creativity. Any anything from music or just sketching. Um, but it's all creativity. I, I'm creating all day. Are you creative in cooking? Um, I want to be. I, w I have a friend of mine, that's r he's a great vegan chef, and he's going to teach me how to make some vegan meals. So, uh, I, is it right you haven't been up to the mountains here, right? Did I get I, that I right? I have not. They told me that the last train, I missed it already. I, w I wanted to catch the train oh. to the top, uh, but the last one was at 5 o'clock. But I, I would love to go up. So if you had the chance to go up to mm -hmm. the mountains, what kind of sport would you like to do? If I could go up to the mountain? Uh -huh. I would love to give a skiing a shot. I've never been skiing, so I would like to try. You know, not down the, the, uh, a steep slope, but I would love to, you know, play around in the snow and, and get a feel for it. I remember the first time um, when I listened to your music was Thanks to the Roots. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got familiar with um, the seed. Mm -hmm. And then back then I remember I thought, oh, cool, there's an album out. But I haven't expected to wait another 10 years mm. for your second yeah, album. A lot of people, yeah. So between the age of 34 and 44, um, what happened that kept you away from recording a new record? Well, it didn't, nothing kept me away. I just took the time. Okay. You know, I just took the time to live. You know, I, I had a son and I, I was a new father. So I wanted to learn 
<laughs> about this new human being. You know, I wanted to become um, really in tune with uh, parenting and not, you know, in and out, back and forth. I really wanted to be stable at home and, and grow mm -hmm. a, a, as a man and as an artist. And so that's all. I just took the time. So you feel pretty comfortable with that decision? Oh, absolutely. You know, because there's more to life than releasing records. Definitely. So I was living life, that's all. But then a new record came up, yes. and I was like, oh, he's working with Patrice, yes, yes, yes. Um, an artist, of course, I know very, very well, yeah, because yeah, I am yeah, from yeah, Germany, yeah, yeah. but I mean, he's, he's well known in other countries yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. How did you guys meet? I was in Cologne doing a, um, a show. Do you, you ever heard of an art gallery called Artie Farty in Cologne? Yeah, sure. Yes. So the Artie Farty brought me in, and um, the kick drum the, for the drum set was broken. And so the promoter, you know, said, well, I know this guy, he's got all this equipment. And so Patrice was the guy. And uh, so Patrice said, I I'll bring the drum right over. And so he brought the drum over. We met. He came over with his production friend, uh, Matt Carmel from, um, from the UK. Mm -hmm. And um, really sweet guy, really honest, humble spirit. And we began to talk about music. And he told me he was a fan of my music. And um, at that time, I was interested in working with some, someone, you know, a producer for my album. And... Um, he said he would love to work with me, so we began to work together. And that was December. We began the album in April. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, where did you record? Or was it that he was in Germany, you in America, and we you did, shared files? We did both. Um, he came to America, and we recorded in a very famous studio in Memphis, Tennessee, where Al Green recorded all of his great classics. And um, then I came over to Cologne, to record my vocals and some more overdubs, and we mixed the record there and mastered there as well. So some people know you in Cologne, I guess, then, right? Some people. Mm, excuse me, a few people, yes. What, what about um, Switzerland? Have you played here a lot? Not a lot. I've, I've played Zurich and uh, I think another city, but um, this is, I think, my second second time here in Switzerland, second or third time. Do uh, you we played uh, Lucerne. Okay. Lutz yeah, we played there, yes, as well. The, uh, the Blue Balls Festival. Mm -hmm. Is Patrice joining you here? Is that maybe no, a second? I wish he was, but uh, Patrice, is, he's headed to uh, Miami right now. Oh. Mm -hmm. To record something here? I'm not sure. His sister lives there, mm -hmm. and so um, I spoke with her yesterday, and she said he's on his way to the States. Yeah. What I thought really interesting is um, that you gave a lot of music free for um, download mm. in the Internet. And, uh, you know, a lot of people hate that because mm -hmm. they say, you know, music is downgrading by doing that. Why did you decide to do that? Like everyone, just trying to adjust the technology and the different business models now, you know. The industry has changed. So it's really about just finding what works now. And that's all. I'm, I'm just experimenting like everyone else with, uh, you know, different distribution models or different ways to get to the people. Mm -hmm. That's it. And how did people react? It was great. It was great. And believe it or not, some people, they accepted the free download, but then they came back and, and bought the album. Cool. So it's, it's a balance, you know. And I think all artists, everyone is trying to find the balance right now. Do you discover uh, artists by the internet? Um, I'm trying to think. I may have a couple of times. I don't listen to a lot of music outside. I listen to a lot of classics. Okay. Um, like I, Motown, that, that's, Mot that's my favorite. Um, Motown, uh, Stax, um, a lot of um, the British bands, the Beatles, the Stones, um, everything really. Um, great funk records, great jazz records, the ones that I have. Um, I'm listening now to a, a Bob Marley and a, well, a Whalers record mm -hmm. that I never heard before. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, Zermatt Unplugged is also a festival for new talents. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of Swiss artists are coming and playing everywhere in the village, up on the mountains okay. and stuff. Um, do you discover uh, a lot of new music? Uh, not as much as I would like. You know. Um, I don't know many, many Swiss bands, so maybe this time I'll, I'll get a chance to get turned on to something new. Well, there's Anastasia, the big one, playing yeah, yeah, yeah. before I, you. I heard about Anastasia, yes. <laughs> Over at the tent, mm -hmm. yes. W will you join? I'm trying, I, I would like to. I think it's around dinner time, mm -hmm. so we're trying to work it out right now. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe you, you're going Hopefully. To okay. Mm -hmm. um, what um, differs compared to your other gigs here? Can you explain a little bit what we can... Well, um, I'll be playing uh, new material for my new album that I'm going to record now mm -hmm. uh, and experimenting with this setup, this dynamic, you know, the cellist. And being more intimate, I'm, I'm trying to get more intimate with the music, like, as, like this, mm -hmm. you know, like no barriers. So 
that's really it, just trying to be, um, you know, really present in the moment with the music. You know, before I have the big band, it's really loud. And I'm able to capture a, a, an intimate vibe, but stripping it down like this, I think it becomes even more personal. And that's what I'm, that's, I'm as an artist, I'm trying to grow and, and mature in that kind of communication, that kind of delivery. What do you think of the idea of um, having a festival that is fully unplugged? I think it's amazing. You know, once again, it, it allows the, the song and, and the spirit of the music, you know, to shine through a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, have so, you don't have so many musical distractions, you know. So to make it um, more immediate, more accessible, I think Unplug really provides the, uh, the means to, to make that happen. Is there any famous Unplugged session where you'd say, this is my favorite? Unfortunately, no. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell the truth, no. Uh, but I, I'm going to check some out. You mean Unplugged from Zermatt or MTV? No, no, yeah, there, there were some great uh, moments back in the day. Um, Uh, Maxwell had a, had, a, had a great unplugged, um, of course, uh, Nirvana and uh, Pearl Jam, you know, I enjoyed those moments. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Zermatt. There is a famous Matterhorn. Do you know? Oh, the Matterhorn. Yeah. I'd heard, heard about it, but I'd never seen it before. Amazing. It's, I mean, it's astonishing. I took a photo of it today. Yeah. Did you send it to someone? Not yet, no, no, no. But, um, I'm going to take some more before I leave. For me, it's like, you know, being in the mountains, it shows me how little I am. You know, a little It's very humbling. <laughs> the Matterhorn, you get very humble, like, I got it, you know? So um, I love being around nature like that because it, it, it I think it, it allows you to, to find a deeper meaning of life, mm -hmm. you know? So absolutely, I love it. So Cody, if I get you right, uh, next time you're going to be here, it will take a few more days to discover the surrounding. I it? hope so. I hope so. I need a good week. I need to be here a good week. And um, there's one last thing I would like to ask okay. you. Do you know what you can eat off the Matterhorn? No, what? You don't know? No, 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 no. Tell me. I show you. No, I show you, okay? Okay. The Mat I tell you a secret, actually. Okay, listen. The Matterhorn is made of chocolate. No, honestly. Wow. Check it out. Okay. You are the one who can open the matto on as well. Beautiful. You want to check? Okay, now? Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. Oh, that's beautiful. That's lovely. I thought if you can make it up to the mountain, that might be... You bring uh, the mountain to me. Yeah. <coughs> awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> This is the guy who ate the Matterhorn. <laughs> What should we do in Zermatt now? The Matterhorn is gone? How does it build, taste? Build, build another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and enjoy the, your you. time here. Thank you very much. Thank you all.